So, good afternoon, everyone. So today I will be presenting on the preliminary results of the Pasig City Emissions Inventory. So as mentioned by uh, Ms. Sarah, uh, the EI for Pasig City focuses uh, specifically on the mobile sources only. So this is the outline of my presentation. So I, I will be discussing a short uh, introduction again and recap on what is an EI, the scope of the EI for Pasig City, the methodology and assumptions that were made, uh, and then what are the preliminary outcomes of the study and the key takeaways. So uh, for more references also on the emissions inventory development, I have included uh, here below a link which will lead you to a learning web portal handled by Clean Air Asia under the Integrated Program for Better Air Quality in Asia. So uh, if you click this link uh, or if you go to this link, uh, it will lead you to a site that gives you more learning materials for on emissions inventory and modeling. So for the introduction and recap, so I think uh, I'll just go over this quickly since Sarah already discussed this. So again, the EI is a comprehensive listing of amounts of air pollutants emitted by various sources in a geographic area during a specific, specific period of time. So that is specific. We have a specific area and a specific period. So we have to know from what date is the emission inventory uh, developed from or what data from what uh, what period were the data collected used to develop the EI. Uh, we need to know that information. And then uh, the, the determination of uh, sources which uh, can lead to targeted action. So this is also mentioned by Sarah. So uh, we know that from the EI, it will give us a list of where uh, what, where are the uh, pollutants, uh, which areas in the city uh, have higher levels of specific pollutant uh, emissions. So we can use this to uh, deem to have targeted actions. And then in the EI, the sources covered usually include point, area, and mobile sources. So uh, but again, for PASIG, we only focus on the mobile sources. And also in an EI, the more sources we have or the higher the activity that is being observed, the higher or the emissions will be. And then if we have higher emission factors, which we will be discussing later, there will be higher emissions as well. And during the development of an EI, uh, absence of an activity data does not equate to no emission. So th these are some of the things that we have to keep in mind in developing an EI. So the development of an EI for PASIG was made possible through the City Switch to E-Mobility project. So this is a project supported by the UPS Foundation. And this is a three-year program to develop clean air action plans focusing on delivering e-mobility solutions for the city. So the project goal is to protect public health from the impacts of transport emissions by mainstreaming sustainable electric mobility solutions in Pasig City's cleaner uh, initiatives. So the EI development is part of the baselining activities and it, uh, the EI results will provide information and will spatially map major emission sources. So these can help in identifying control measures and can help us strategize in how to address them. So uh, the following flow chart here shown below shows the overview of the EI process in this project. So we had we did data collection, we did scoping, and then we also had a uh, EI training and co-development with Pasig City Departments, CTDMO and Centro. And then uh, all of these are used to develop the baseline assessment report, which will then feed into the development of the e-mobility roadmap for Pasig City. Okay, so for the scope methodology and assumptions, so the scoping helps us identify the coverage of the EI. So for this project, the geographical boundary is limited to the area of Pasig City. And then the period or base year use for this uh, EI is 2019, since it was the latest year uh, pre-pandemic. So this will help determine baseline emission values during what we may call the normal conditions, not the new normal, which we assume to, to happen once the pandemic is over. So this is also to avoid underestimation of emissions level. So we will be using uh, 29, well, we use 2019 as our base year. And then table one here on your left shows 
what vehicle sources and pollutants were covered in the EI. So these include the private vehicles, passenger cars, SUVs, and vans, uh, motorcycles. And then for public transportation, we have buses, minibuses, jeepneys, utility vehicles or UV Express, taxis, tricycles, and freight, uh, which include like commercial vehicles, trucks, and trailers. And then for the pollutants covered, uh, we have uh, particulate matter, uh, with aerodynamic diameter of less than 10 micrometers and less than 2.5 micrometers or better known as PM10 and PM2.5. We also have black carbon, carbon monoxide, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, non-methane volatile organic compounds or NM NMVOCs, carbon dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide, and methane. So these are combinations of criteria pollutants, uh, greenhouse gases, and what we call short-lived climate pollutants. So for the mobile emissions inventory for Pasig City, the general computational framework for emissions calculations is the following. So we have emissions is equal to emission factor times activity data. So emissions, uh, emission factors are the amount of pollutants emitted per unit of emission source. So this, this, is, this uh, value is usually obtained from literature or studies. So these are examples of EFs, Oh, so we, uh, from this point, we will be uh, abbreviating this to EF. So EF or emission factors, there are different types. And then we have different uh, sources here for where we can get these values. And then activity data, one part of the uh, equation, uh, include data derived from emission sources. So in this case, for our mobile sources, we are deriving vehicle kilometers traveled or VKT, or from what uh, Sarah showed earlier in the data template, we have annual vehicle kilometers. So that is the same uh, VKT. And then uh, we will be deriving those, uh, we, I mean, we derive uh, the VKT from the collected data. And this was done by identifying significant roads in Pasig. So when we say significant, it means that there is a significant traffic or vehicular activity along those roads. And then these usually include the primary, secondary, national highway, uh, primary, secondary roads, and then national highways, and other roads that were deemed to have significant uh, activity as consulted with Pasig Transport. And then to obtain the activity data for private vehicles, uh, vehicle flow analysis was performed. Uh, this was done through an alternative method using the Google Maps data extraction, which uh, Sarah has outlined earlier. And then for public uh, transportation, uh, uh, data such as fleet size, route maps, and route, uh, route lengths were used. Okay, so to, to quickly recap uh, what Ms. Sarah outlined earlier. So again, we had the following template that we used and selected representative dates of different seasons were, set, were chosen. So the three seasons, school, school uh, vacation, and Christmas season, uh, were selected because these uh, were deemed to have different traffic profiles observed during each season. So for each barangay, the number of vehicle type passing through each uh, road segment. So for barangay, uh, the significant roads were identified, and then we did the data extraction for road segment. So for each uh, road segment, for each date, the vehicle type passing through uh, that road was determined and then it was also the speed data was also estimated for each uh, road segment. So this was done first by obtaining the minimum and maximum travel time through a particular road segment using Google Maps. Uh, and this was uh, data for specific uh, part or particular hours during the day was also done. For example, travel times were obtained for each hour as shown here, if you can see the screen and my cursor, so from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. for major roads. And then for minor roads, we only sell, uh, extracted data from 6 to 8 a.m. and 5 to 7 p.m. And then from the extracted data, uh, speed data, bulk speed data for each hour was computed and using, um, was then computed using these data. And then uh, also using the length of the specific road segment that was selected for the Google Maps. So again, from the data ex Google Maps data extraction, we were able to obtain speed data, which we can use to calculate the annual vehicle uh, kilometers traveled. 
by each uh, vehicle type. Okay. Uh, before I go to the next slide, uh, after the speed data, uh, after the speed data extraction, a manual vehicle count was done along five random points along the road. So Ms. Sarah also showed this earlier uh, along the road segment. So we use the random uh, vehicle, uh, random point vehicle count uh, to fill in the table here below. And then with that, uh, the annual VKT was uh, calculated per road segment. And then we so uh, we took the sum for the whole barangay. So in summary, uh, for the PI methodology for private vehicles, okay, um, using the bulk speed, the passenger car unit, so bulk speed in step one, passenger car units or PCU were derived using the speed PCU function, which was calibrated actually for Indian road. So we have cited here the study. And then a PCU or passenger count uh, a car units is a uniform measure of vehicles used for converting traffic stream composed of two or more vehicle types into an equivalent traffic stream uh, composed of ex exclusively passenger cars. So after that, uh, using the following data and uh, uh, these were all incorporated within the Excel file. So it was easy to just uh, input the Speed date, the speed data, or basically the minimum uh, time it takes to travel along the selected road segment. And then using this, uh, we were able to compute the VKT. Along with other uh, data such as vehicle share. And then for the public transportation, such as uh, specifically for the jeepneys, UVs, and buses, uh, data were obtained from relevant Pasig City departments, such as uh, Pasig Transport. Oh, sorry, Pasig Transport and City Demo are the same. Uh, and then uh, these were used in calculation of the VKT per route and per barangay. And then the total VKT from uh, per barangay was obtained. And this was done by manually obtaining route lengths per barangay using Google My, uh, My Map. So what we did, uh, we know the... Uh, a route map of each uh, of each uh, behind of jeepney or UV or bus, and then we plotted this in Google Maps, and then we manually measured the road length or the route route length per barangay. So we use this to estimate how much is the activity data for each vehicle type in for each road in a barangay. Okay, so the equation shown on the slide is, was used to obtain the emissions for jeepneys and buses. So it includes the round trip length, number of operating days in a year, emission factors, and the fleet size, and the number of trips or dispatches. So on ta the table four on your right shows the operational assumptions that were assumed to use this uh, equation. So the operation, operational assumptions were based on uh, est on the estimates of a jeepney sector analysis study that was done by Department of Transportation and GIZ in 2006. And then uh, for tricycles, uh, data were again provided by relevant uh, Pasig City departments, so City Demo and Toro. And then assumptions include the distance traveled per day, which was 65 kilometers as observed in a local study, which was led by uh, one of our speakers today, so Dr. Manny Bayona. And then the equations shown on the slide here shows how the emissions were calculated from, uh, emissions of tricycles were calculated. So it, the, uh, the equation includes the distance traveled per day, the number of operating days in a year, the tricycle fleet size in the barangay, and the tricycle emission factor. So for these, uh, for each uh, TODA, the fleet size was apportioned to the barangays according to the area of the Toda zone sh uh, shown on your left, uh, on your right, in each barangay. So this was done by importing KML files of the barangay delineation so, and tricycle zones in Google My Maps. And we manually determined the area of each Toda zone in each barangay. Okay. So after that, uh, since we're done 
at this point, we have now discussed the activity data in terms of VTT from the different vehicle types. So for the emission factors, liter literature values were locally adjusted. So EFs were adopted from a 2016 ENEP EAA guidebook. Uh, uh, the ref complete reference for this is listed uh, in the last slide. And then these were locally adjusted. So this was done through the use of vehicle variant shares, uh, emission standards, fuel share, and fuel economy. So in the absence of official data, vehicle shares by fuel and uh, vehicle emission standards shown in table five were, were based on the local knowledge on the transport or vehicle fleet characteristics in the city or in the region and the professional judgment of the EI team uh, also uh, cons in consultation with Dr. Manny Bayona. And then table six uh, shows figures derived from the same uh, reference, the 2016 uh, ENEP guidebook, and also based on the interviews, on previous interviews by the team of Dr. Manny Bayona. So for the emission uh, factors, so table seven shows the adjusted emission factors by vehicle type. So the, uh, in the unit gram per kilometer, and uh, so now we have the activity data. We already know our emission factors. When we multiply them, we will get the emissions per pollutant. So first, so now we can go to the preliminary results. So for the results, the figure, the big figure, the graph, um, shows the emission shares by barangay. So as shown on the uh, figure, it notice that uh, barangay Ugong had the highest emissions of all species that were considered in the inventory. So contributing to more than 50% of the total emissions for all species, except for methane. So uh, this was mostly due to the number of the significant roads in the barangay, so for Ugong. And then for other barangays, uh, they were emissions were more or less evenly distributed except for Pinagbuhatan, which contributed more to NMDOCs. So again, this is, uh, this is non-methane volatile organic compounds and carbon monoxide and methane. So this was due to the consider considerable tricycle uh, fleet size operating within barangay, where in fact, uh, Pinagbuhatan, based on the data collected, had uh, a tricycle fleet size at 2,243 units. So for the whole of Pasig City, just a quick uh, note also, the major pollutant or the, or the pollutant with the highest emission levels uh, based on the preliminary results was carbon dioxide and this was followed by carbon monoxide. So both of these are a uh, product of combustion. So next, for the next slide, so this figure now shows the emission shares by each vehicle type in passing. So in the previous slide, we know which pollutant is the major pollutant in the city, which barangay had the highest level of emissions. So now we will go to which vehicle type is uh, the major contributor for each pollutant. So I have here listed down uh, what the following um, abbreviations mean. So just to summarize, major contributors per pollutant for NMDOC, we have tricycles and motorcycles. For carbon, mon for carbon monoxide, we have passenger cars and SUV or vans. And then for nitrogen oxides, trucks, and then we also have SUV and vans again. For the particulate matter, we have uh, for both PM10 and PM2.5, we again, SUV and vans are the major contributors. Uh, same thing for sulfur oxides. And then for methane, we have tricycles and motorcycles. And then for nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and black carbon, uh, SUV and vans also contribute to those. And uh, along with passenger cars for nitrous oxide, trucks for CO2, and, um, again, and for black carbon SUV and vans again. So again, to summarize this slide, major contributors to emissions in the city include tricycle, motorcycles, passenger cars, SUV and vans, and trucks. Okay, so, so now we will go to the, uh, these figures. Will The next few figures will be showing the geographical distribution of the emissions within the city. So we have here the legend, the darker the color is, the more uh, higher the level of emissions are. So the maps shown here are also overlaid with locations of vulnerable sectors, such as 
health facilities in schools. So we chose health facilities because uh, people who usually go there or people who stay in the hospital are, have uh, compromised health. And also we chose schools because that is where uh, the younger uh, population tend to uh, tend to crowd or stay for longer uh, periods of time during the uh, pre-pandemic. Okay, uh, and then table nine also shows the population per barangay, where barangays with the highest uh, population are highlighted. So it is important to consider where the vulnerable sectors are because this will help us in decision making and prioritization of measures or policies to be implemented. So for this slide, I'm showing uh, the results for particulate matter. So notice that Barangay Ugong has the highest PM emissions for both. And then th this is followed by San Nicolas, uh, Oranbo, and ba Bagong Ilog. So the, the main source of PM emissions in Ugong are SUV and vans, while for the three other uh, barangays, uh, the jeepneys are the major sources. So again, uh, using this map, we can uh, see which barangays have higher number of vulnerable sectors based on the legend. So we have health facilities as the red circle and schools as the uh, yellow square. So we notice that there are many around this area. So this will be helpful in the planning uh, for prioritization or for targeted action uh, to address uh, uh, the, these specific emissions or uh, emission sources. So for black carbon and nitrous oxide, on your left uh, is the summary for black carbon. So Ugong still had the highest BC emissions, which were mainly due to your SUV or vans and trucks. And then the second uh, uh, barangay with the highest emission was Oranbo, with emissions mostly coming from SUV and vans. And then for nitrous oxide, again, barangay Ugong had the highest emissions, uh, emission level, while the rest of the Barangays in Pasig were more or less evenly distributed, and for the other barangays, the major sources include SUV or vans, passenger cars, trucks, jeepneys, and light commercial vehicles. For nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides, again, Ugong had the highest emissions for both uh, pollutants. For nitrogen oxide on your left, Oranbo and Mangahan also uh, had high nitrous oxide emissions, mostly due to trucks, trailers, and jeepneys. While for your sulfur oxides, um, the emissions for the other barangays were, again, more or less evenly distributed. And major sources for these uh, were diesel vehicles, which include SUV or vans, uh, passenger cars, trucks, and light commercial vehicles. And then for the next set of pollutants, we have non-methane volatile organic compounds and methane. So for NMVOC, uh, Ugong again had the highest NMVOC emissions, which were mainly due to uh, SUVs or vans, motorcycles, and passenger cars. And then this was followed by Pinagbuhatan with emissions mostly coming from tricycles. So recall that um, Pinagbuhatan has quite a uh, big fleet size for the tricycles. So that's why we are seeing this trend. And then for methane, major sources of methane in uh, Emissions are tricycles and motorcycles. So the barangays with the most number of these vehicles are Pinagbuhatan for tricycle and Ugong for motorcycle. So these were the two, uh, the two barangays which uh, generated the highest, uh, higher or highest emissions for methane. And then for carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, uh, Ugong was the Barangay with the highest level of emissions for both pollutants, which came from uh, passenger cars, SUV, and vans. And then for carbon monoxide, barangays Pinagbuhatan and San Nicolas also had high carbon monoxide emissions, mostly due to tricycles. While for, uh, for carbon dioxide, barangay Oranbo and barangay Bagong Ilog had high CO2 emissions, mostly due to jeepney. So that uh, concludes the part of the preliminary results. So we have key takeaways from the EI. So based on our preliminary uh, investigation, the res results show that Barangay Ugong had the highest emission of all species inventoried. Uh, this is mainly due to, again, the number of significant uh, roads within the barangay. And since it has uh, 
uh, a lot of significant roads, a lot of vehicles uh, fly the, these roads, hence contributing more to the emission levels in Barangay Ugon. So again, as mentioned earlier, the more activity there is, the more uh, the higher the emissions uh, that we will be obtaining. And then motorcycles and tricycles are significant sources of NMDOC, methane and carbon monoxide. Passenger cars also contribute significantly to NMDOC CO and nit nitrous oxide. And then SUV and, va and vans were significant sources of the following pollutants. So uh, they were the significant sources of quite a lot. And then diesel-powered vehicles such as trucks, like commercial vehicles and jeepneys, are also significant sources of nitro uh, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, uh, particulate matter, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and black carbon. So using this information, uh, the, cit the city, Pasig City, can use this information to help develop uh, or formulate plans or policies or uh, recommendations to what can be done to address and have targeted uh, to address these uh, emission sources or um, uh, pollutants. And th this will help us also have targeted actions. It can help us uh, prioritize since uh, we know that uh, the, we have limited resources. So it, this uh, information can help us prioritize which action to take. So I think uh, I will conclude uh, my presentation. So I have also attached here the references that were uh, used in the development of the EI. So I think uh, that is all. So Sarah. Thank you, Dana.